Hey, welcome back to the e-learning video series on BSF BioWaste Processing. This module in the BSFL conversion chapter will focus on the treatment stage. By the end of this module, you'll be able to describe the process parameters of this stage. You'll be able to execute setting up an incubator unit as well as a Larvero unit. And you'll be able to recognize the need for certain data and apply the procedures for collecting this data. We are going to dig deeper into the biowaste treatment process, which is the most essential process of the BSFL biowaste conversion system. The treatment stage here is separated in two steps. The first one being the incubator step and the second, the treatment step. We separate these two steps mainly because we want to ensure that the operational labor and space cost can be reduced as much as possible because this system is meant to be operated in an urban environment with limited space and higher wages. These two steps each come with their own container size, while the amount of larvae in the container remain the same. The larvae will grow inside the smaller container, and at the moment they become too big, they are moved to the bigger container. The total number of larvae that will eventually be added to the conversion craze can thus start their first days of bio-waste feeding in the small boxes, or the incubator units, which are in our case four times smaller compared to the conversion crates. The treatment stage is similar to the larval growth stage, presented in the BSF rearing module. In this stage, however, the larvae are not continuously fed with a formulated feed, but with a biowaste based mixed substrate. The operation includes the step of preparing the incubator boxes and the treatment crates. The 5 doll will be added as dosed onto the prepared substrate mixture and will grow up until they are harvested. In the previous module, we discussed the different biowaste streams and how to process them. Here, we're going to focus on the biowaste treatment process. I first want to come back to the different stages where the larvae will be going through and how to facilitate this. The larvae are handled in phases based on their age and we express this in day-old larvae or doll. So, as we mentioned in the previous chapter on BSF rearing, the five-day-old larvae or five doll are produced in the nursery and from zero to five days old they are feeding on a formulated feed. Now here in this module we'll be looking at two phases one from five to eight doll larvae where, where the larvae can, are in the incubator units feeding on the nutritious bioway source and the treatment area where the larvae stay from five until 15 to 17 days old and they'll be feeding on regular biowaste. The larvae will be dosed according to the substrate nutrition. But because this varies between the different substrates, we want to focus here on the dosing for the two most common bio-waste sources that you can find in urban areas, which are fruits and vegetables from local markets and segregated household bio-waste. In addition to the nutritional value of the waste, the dosing is also based on the water content of the substrates, with we condition to be around 75%. So, for fruits and vegetables from the market, you can expect to have about 1 gram of feed per larva. And for the segregated household weights, around 0.8 grams per larva. This means that the segregated household waste is more nutritious and therefore less waste is needed to grow the larvae. Keep in mind that this is the amount of substrate that will be fed to both the incubator and the treatment units combined. This calculation will result in the total number of larvae that you would have to add to the incubator units and will eventually be transferred to the cr treatment crates. Also, make sure that in the boxes and the crates that you'll be using for incubator and treatment units, the max height of the substrate does not exceed 8 cm. Lower is always better, but a higher substrate height can cause anaerobic conditions in the lower areas, so larvae will not be able to feed on this part of the substrate. Lastly, the retention time for the treatment phase depends heavily on nutritional value and the ambient conditions. This is why earlier we mentioned that the treatment area can provide grown larvae between 15 and 17 days old. This, this does matter um, because we don't know what nutritional value the waste has in your site. As with the previous module, in the following step-by-step -step process video, we, will, we cannot show you all the materials that you currently see in front of you due to their size. The materials shown here are used at our pilot site. 
we will be focusing on setting up the incubator boxes or small boxes, as well as the treatment crates. You'll see the process of setting these up, but not the process of adding the boxes into the incubator rack and the stacking and moving of the pallets. This is due to the restrictions we had in our studios. The following materials can be used for the treatment stage. So first, we focus on the incubation phase. For the larvae between five and eight days old, or five to eight old, we're using an incubation rack of 185 centimeters by 155 centimeters by 65 centimeters to place the crates of 60 by 40 by 15 centimeters, which are similar to the conversion crates in. Each crate can hold four incubator boxes of each 30 20 by 20 by 10 centimeters. Then for the treatment phase, we're using conversion crates, conversion pallets and ventilation frames. The conversion pallet and ventilation frames have the exact same length and width of 129 times 122 centimeters to each be able to hold and fit exactly six conversion crates. On the right side, on the top right side, you will see the conversion unit, which is built up of a pallet, six rolls of six, each six crates, and five ventilation frames in between them. The conversion unit can be moved around using a pallet trolley with a capacity of two tons. And then for the biowaste feeding, an 80 liter material bin is used with a spade for moving the biowaste into the crates. A scale with a max capacity of 150 kilograms and an accuracy of 50 grams is used to weigh the waste that is added to each conversion crate. And the crates and bins can be moved around the feeding station and positioned using a trolley. We start this operation by preparing the 36 small boxes. We add one kilogram of waste to each box. We then add one cup with 10,005 doll onto this waste and we place the 36 small boxes into a crate and then add the crate into the incubator rack. We then take the oldest group of 36 small boxes or incubators from the incubator rack and we place them near the feeding station. We put six crates onto the pallet and feed them each 9 kg of bio waste. We place an open ventilation frame over the six uh, crates. We then stack the next layer of six crates onto the ventilation frame and repeat this process until a stack of six layers of crates with a total of 36 crates is completed. So you've just watched the operational video. Let's go over the two operations that we separated in our checklist here. The first is the preparation of the incubator units or the so-called small boxes. We prepared 36 clean boxes. We added one kilogram of fruit waste and palm kernel meal in each box. We placed the four small boxes into one crate. We repeat this process until the 36th small box was done. We, we added the, the 10,005 doll for the 36 times in the small boxes and we added the boxes into the incubator frame. We then set up the treatment pallet where we took the 36 small boxes with the oldest date, placed them near the feeding station and we added the, we uh, um, prepared the other materials, the conversion crates, the pallet and the five ventilation frames. We weighed 9 kg of shredded bio waste, put it into a conversion crate and added the content of the small box onto it. We repeated the steps for all the 36 crates. And we then set up the pallet, adding these six crates per row, covering them with the vent ventilation frame and repeating this five times for each of the pallets that we set up. Note that there is no data collection point here. We do actually collect data in this stage, but it is more for the purpose of knowing which unit was set up when, rather than collecting new data. With the data collection of what went into the treatment during the pre-processing stage and what came out during the harvesting stage, you can make a mass balance and know how the larvae performed. This schedule helps, to op helps the operators to remember which pellet needs to be set up and which pellet needs to be harvested. In addition, it can serve as additional information. For example, when it seems that the performance is going down, you can check this schedule and perhaps notice that actually only one of the pallets performed bad. So this is how we fill in the schedule. The left column, you start by adding the pallet code or the date code of the pallet. This can, for example, be P1, or you can make your own code. You then note down the number of crates that will be on this pallet and the number of five doll that are added to this pallet. Make sure that you add the total amounts for all these values. For example, for the larvae, not only for the number of larvae that are added per crate. 
you then note down the date of the incubator unit, which is going to be used for this pallet. In this case, the incubator unit or small boxes used was, were from 46.1 or Monday of week 46. You also note down how many kilograms of waste was added into the incubator units. In our case, as you learned before, we always add one kilogram per small box, meaning 36 kilograms in total. We now focus on setting up the, the con conversion units. So the conversion units is set up on 46.4, meaning on Thursday of week 46. In total, 324 kilograms of waste was added on in that day into the 36 conversion crates, which means nine kilograms per crate. And then when it's time to harvest the pellet, you can write down the date when the pellet is going to be harvested. In this case, on the schedule, you'll, you see that it is harvested on 47.5 or Friday in week 47. So with this one line, you will know what the conversion is for this setup of an incubator or small box and the conversion unit. In total, for this setup, 360 kilograms were, were, went into the combined setup of the incubator boxes and the conversion crates. And 146.7 kilograms of residue was collected, as well as 41.5 kilograms of larvae. So we've always come to the end of this module. Here is, it's time again for a refreshment. So we have two questions for you. First, why are we using incubator boxes or small boxes? This is to reduce space and labor cost by reducing the retention time of the larvae in conversion units and reducing the number of feedings. Second question, what is the retention time of the larvae in the incubator unit? This is three days. We have already come to the end of this uh, module on the treatment. In this module, we learned that the treatment step as part of the BSFL conversion operations comes before the harvesting step and after the pre-processing step. The five-day-old larvae first feed on the substrate for about three days in incubator units and are then moved into lavero units where they feed for an additional nine days. We also learned that the data on the amount of substrate that is being fed to the larvae has to be constantly collected to support the performance indicator points. Thank you for watching this module, part of the e-learning video series on BSF BioWaste Processing. More information can be found in the BSF step-by-step -step guide, which you can download through the QR code here. Both of these materials were part of the forward project by EWAC in collaboration with the Ministry of Public Works in Indonesia and funded by SECO, the Swiss State Secretariat for Economic Affairs.